Hey, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, we're gonna talk about what the Ethereum difficulty bomb is, a little bit of its history and why it matters so much right now. The difficulty bomb is a mechanism in the Ethereum network to increase the difficulty of mining. The reason it's always existed is in tandem with the move of proof of work to proof of stake, right? This goes all the way back to 2015 when the Ethereum difficulty bomb mechanism was put into the Ethereum network. You know, way back then, the way this was all supposed to work is that we would have two separate chains. We would have the proof of work chain and then we would have the proof of stake chain. And that's still really true right now. But the way it would work back then is the proof of work chain would get turned off and they wanted some incentive to move everybody over to the proof of stake chain. And that was a difficulty bomb. And the difficulty bomb would go off, increase the difficulty of mining on the network exponentially over time, where then eventually the network would come to a complete freeze, the proof of work network. And there would be no incentive to keep mining on it because it would make no sense and blocks would just essentially stop being produced. And that was the way that we're gonna make sure everybody moved over to the proof of stake chain. And that's why you hear the term ice age a lot. That's the freeze of the proof of work network. So a lot of kind of changed since then. That's all the way back in 2015. We're talking seven years ago. And now the two chains are meant to come together. The proof of work and proof of stake chain are meant to come together. That's why you have the term, the merge. And we'll talk a little bit about the merge and why this all plays into that a little later in this video. But what I think I wanted to start with, because I did some old, my own learning this last couple of days is the history of the Ethereum difficulty bomb um, how many times it's been delayed, how many times it's gone off. And we'll talk about like a little bit of where it is now, look at some charts and stuff. So let's move over here and I'm on ethereum.org and there's this really cool, I'll link it down in the description below, history of Ethereum. And you're looking at Frontier, right? This is back in July and August of 2015 was when this upgrade happened to the Ethereum network and Frontier included the difficulty bomb. This is really cool. You can go on the GitHub and you can see it August 5th, 2015, added difficulty bomb. Again, this was added because this was gonna be the way to make sure everybody moved over to the proof of stake chain and that proof of work mining would just completely freeze. And you can read about it in the Ethereum protocol update over on the Ethereum blog back in August 4th, 2015. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see the difficulty adjustment scheme. This is how we would implement a switch from proof of work to proof of stake and at the time it was called Serenity and it would be handled by the newly introduced difficulty adjustment scheme, which is called the difficulty bomb, which guarantees a hard fork point in the next 16 months. It works as following, starting from block 200,000, the difficulty will undergo an exponential increase, which will only become noticeable in about a year. And after that, we'll eventually recent ice age of shorts. The difficulty will simply be too high for anyone to find a block. Again, freezing the proof of work chain completely so everybody moves over to proof of stake. Well, we're still not on proof of stake and that was all the way back in 2015. So let's look at what's happened since then. I'm gonna go over to this chart here and just to illustrate this. So you can already see these huge dips, right? What this chart is showing you is the amount of Ethereum block counts being produced. And when these huge dips happen is when the difficulty bomb goes off. So difficulty bomb went off probably right around here and then just exponentially got worse. So less and less and less blocks were produced. And then you can see it come right back up. So let's pause here and talk about what happened. So what happened is the bomb went off just like it was designed to do, but the uh, proof of stake just wasn't ready yet. So the Ethereum network had to do a hard fork. And back then in 2017, that was Byzantium. So they did a Byzantium hard fork to delay the difficulty bomb, kick it down the road because proof of stake wasn't ready, and then block times and block counts normalized again. Well, that happened five times now. So that happened in 2017, 2019, 2020, and twice in 2021, where the difficulty bomb was delayed. And you can see all those one, two, three, four, five spikes down there. Where we are right now is that the difficulty bomb's gone off again. And it's not as noticeable, right? right now, but you can see it starts off, you can kind of notice it, and then all of a sudden drops off a cliff. So you can see right now our block counts are going down again. And we're gonna take a look at the block times here in a second too. So if I switch over to that, correlating with all of those um, drops in block counts and in upswings and difficulty, 
is how many seconds between each block produced on the Ethereum network. You're normally back in 2017 around 14 seconds, you know, this year and last year around 13.2 seconds. And you can see if we go back to that 2017 model again, the block times got all the way up to 30 seconds before that hard fork happened and then dropped them all the way back down to 13. You can see other blips here as well where the difficulty bomb has gone off. And so it may look real small right now, but you can see we're normally around 13.2, 13.3 seconds per block for so far in 2022. Uh, and right now, as of today, yesterday, we're at 13.52. So we're definitely feeling the effects of the difficulty bomb as it's happening right now, though it's not major. But as you can see, it starts off slight and then just drops off a cliff. So now what? It still exists for the same reason, right? And that is to move over to proof of stake, but proof of stake still is not ready. And the Ethereum Foundation just had a call. They had this call on April 29th. And if you wanna to listen to it, I'll link it down in the description. About the last 30 minutes is where they talk about the difficulty bomb and the status of the merge. And the merge still seems like it has a little bit of work to do because you're not on public test nets or any of that yet. And so now the question is the bomb has gone off but proof of stake still is not ready. So do we delay the bomb again? Or do we leave it right where it is if proof of stake might be ready soon? And there's two sides to this. And I think I can see both sides to the argument. The first is pretty easy. It's just, let's get rid of it. Let's delay it. Let's kick it down the road so we don't have to worry about it. We can really focus on the merge. The other side of the argument is, let's leave it right where it is, you know, in hope that the merge will be ready soon because we want, you know, miners to understand that Proof of work is going away. And so what will happen is the difficulty will increase, right? Block times will become longer. Mining profitability will start to drop for Ethereum. So then miners get phased out based on their electricity and their hardware. People start selling GPUs. Um, you see, uh, also you're going to see miners maybe switch to other coins because maybe profitability kind of levels out. And there's some other crypto projects that become, you know, as profitable or competitively profitable with Ethereum. Uh, and then the other part of that argument too is the Ethereum network doesn't want any competitive hard forks to happen uh, for proof of work when the merge happens. You know, if miners decided to keep going on the proof of work chain or to fork the proof of work chain and keep going, if the difficulty bomb is there, that chain is still going to freeze just like it was designed to do in the early days. And it makes, you know, doing a hard fork really just not worth it because what are you going to do? Do it for a couple of weeks and the Ethereum network's going to freeze? Like why you would, why would you want to do that? So there's the arguments, you know, to both sides here. Um, and the decision that they made on this last developer call was to not make a decision, really just to wait two weeks until the next developer call to make a final decision about what they want to do with this difficulty bomb. Do they want to delay it? Do they want to keep it where it is? We'll give them a sense of like kind of how much more we're feeling it before making a decision. And it all just revolves around like how close are they to prove a stake? Because if they're close, yeah, leave the difficulty bomb where it is. But if you're far away, you don't want to impact the end user experience of the Ethereum network. Because that's the whole other part of this too, is block times get super long. Guess what happens? Transactions take really long. Um, and that could be really dangerous for Ethereum and its end users and everything else that happens on the Ethereum network other than us miners. So I'm going to stay tuned. I'm going to check into that developer call happening in a little less than two weeks to see what they come up with. But I think this is the thing I'm paying the most attention to right now. I know the merge is going to happen. I know proof of work is going to get turned off. But in the meantime, am I going to start feeling a real hit in profitability if this difficulty bomb really goes off and we start to feel the impacts to it? I would love to know all your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys learned something. I did a lot of learning on this myself uh, in this last few days. So hopefully I could share a little bit with you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU mining content. Join my Discord if you want to chat. Links in the description below. Social media links are also in the description below. And as always, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.